Welcome back, Daddy and Ghost Beaters. If you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming, and hard to believe we're already two weeks past the birthday of Evil Dead the game. And I was been working on this video for you of the good, the bad, and the you got real ugly of year one. And as we look at things, we're gonna look at things that the Saber has done really well with Evil Dead the game, things they've done not so well, and things they've just absolutely shite the bed on. And <laughs> we're gonna start with the good. And there actually is a lot of good in year one, and we're gonna focus on three things in particular. One, their release schedule for content has been really solid. Now, we haven't got anything in year two yet, but we did get six full drops in year one. And they've added a lot of characters that people really like. We did get Mia Allen and David Allen in the 2013. We got Blacksmith, which was a little bit of a head scratcher considering the fact that, you know, there's some much bigger characters out there. But we did get Ruby and we did get Brock, who were both fan favorites. And then, of course, we got Plague Bringer, which was also another kind of head scratcher. But you could tell they really had a good contract with the Army of Darkness to start the game. And then, of course, probably the most anticipated demon and ball in that year one content. So a pretty decent amount, you know, was five survivors and two demons. Like, not terrible. Number two, the prestige system, which is actually going to make two different lists. Um, it's going to make the good and the bad list. And here's why. One, it's good because it was something that was desperately needed. It, you need something to grind for. You need something that is going to make players play and also respect players' time. And that's what happens with live service ASIM games. You need that component of this carrot, why am I playing? Because let's be honest, as much as I enjoy playing Evil Dead the game, I want to make it that it's worth my time to play. And even if you're playing right now in the double XP weekend, you're doing it because you want to level characters. You want to get your characters as close to Prestige 5 during this time as you can and get those bonus spirit points. And the third and final thing that makes you really enjoy the game is the gameplay itself. The combat is probably one of the best of any game that I've ever played when it comes to an ASIM. And even as much fun as I'm having with Texas Chainsaw this weekend in the tech test, the combat system of Evil Dead is probably better. Now, that has some really good components, the activities have been solid, the balance between DPSing from melee side versus the range side feels really good, and it is a fun game to play, and that's a huge reason that we reached one year. But there's a lot of stuff on the other side that gives concerns for year two as well, and we'll start with the bird. The bad list is also going to have three things on it, and number one on the bad list is actually what was number two on the good list, and that's the prestige system. And there's two things that are really wrong with the prestige system at the moment. One, going to five is fine, and they should even look to go beyond that, but the rewards suck. Absolutely suck. No one gives a shit about screamers, and they should absolutely stop trying to shove them down our throats. Also, a lot of the perk boosts we got were basically just giving back perks. Like, I'm a David main, and they basically cut both of his perks to then just reboost them through the prestige system. It was absolutely did not feel like he benefited. It almost feel like you absolutely have to have David prestige to make him feel like he did coming out of the box, which is a really bizarre thing. Another big miss is why is it so grindy? Like a lot of the times the challenges have absolutely no sense in the actual character or they're tremendously just inflated. So you just have to play the hell out of it and mostly just buy them because a lot of times some of the stuff is so ridiculous you're never actually going to achieve it in any reasonable amount of time and that is one of the things we have to look at the grind from p1 through p5 is awful and yes we do have the double xp weekend so it is helping alleviate some of that but these aren't necessarily frequent this might be the only time we get one because we've literally never had an event in year two which is actually bad number two there was zero events. You didn't take advantage of the holidays. You didn't change the maps at all. You didn't acknowledge Halloween or Christmas. And it made it feel very generic year round. So that was another problem with the game. And it's kind of being exemplified by this double XP weekend. Because you are seeing people come back and play the game. Just to get those bonus spear points for prestiging characters. And the third thing that made the bad list. The amount of skins. Look. As an ASM game, and you want to continue moving forward, you need to make us buy stuff. Like, that is how you keep the game going. Not just dropping the chapters and giving a few skins, but actually letting us buy stuff so we can change the look on the characters. There's still quite a few characters that have zero skins, including Ruby, which makes 
absolutely no sense to me at all. And somehow we still find ourselves here where basically we get like three to five skins when a chapter drops and nothing in between unless you count like the Savini Ash 2.0 skin, which is basically the only skin that dropped by itself. It's just a very bizarre system. It decreases the amount of revenue, of course, that Saber is getting. And I just think there's just a huge opportunity here for us to get our money taken. Take my money! And they just don't do it. Now, this is going to bring us to the You Got Real Ugly. And there is three things that are massively, massively ugly about Evil Dead the game. The first one we have to talk about, and let's be honest, I think pretty much everyone is screaming this at the top of their lungs. Where are the maps? We literally got zero maps in year one. Like, that is inexcusable for a brand new game. You can't drop a game, especially a horror ASIM, and just say, you know what, we'll get to it when we get to it. Even in the interview, it's like, eh, it's not really a big concern. It's a lot of work. Like, people get sick of playing on the same maps over and over again. And I don't know if it's just me, but I barely get Kandar. Like, I might get Kandar and then not see it for three weeks. Like, it's terrible. Like, the map rotation sucks. The map allotment sucks. Like, it is really, really bad. And the fact that the only thing we technically got was just Kandar, which was late. Like, it doesn't help when you want to keep playing the game. Because sometimes change of scenery really can make a game feel better. And I'll be honest... I hate the fact that most of the time I spend my time on the big map and I just want to get out of there as quickly as possible. Number two, and this is also really, really ugly, and it has been the balance the entire time. Like, Saber has not figured out remotely how to balance this game. And even when it felt like it was okay, they come and do some massive swing that either affects the survivor side or most likely affects the demon side, and it makes it feel really bad. And balance has been a struggle from them from the day one, and I don't expect it to get any better in year two. Like, I expect we could get a, a map or two in year two. I don't think balance will ever be figured out, because every time they do a tweak, they don't do minor tweaks tweaks where you're like i'm going to tweak this a little bit and allow this to kind of roll out and see how it affects the community they're like how about massive changes and they don't run any kind of test arena where we can go in and say here you can clearly see this isn't working this is why it's not working there's no ptb to hop on i don't know if they even play or test at all like it is really wild how they handle balancing and it just comes out of nowhere and sometimes they just don't even tell us which is another wild thing and this is still part of part two is when we get patch notes patch notes are only anywhere from 25 to 50 percent accurate when they drop it makes no sense i've literally never seen this from a company ever but yet here we do we're like all right time to drop patch notes to video a day or two later after we figure out what they stealth did and then everyone reports on them so like it's just a really bad system and it leads to number three and number three is I, I don't know if there's any way for them to fix this. And that is communication. There is literally nothing. Like, you go through long periods of radio silence. The community manager is basically non-existent. They do sometimes do a rando post on Reddit or on their Discord. But for the most part, it is radio silence from chapter to chapter. And it kills the morale of the community like I've never seen in the game. They don't try to post things on Twitter. They don't try to post things anywhere, to be honest with you. And if they do retweet something on Twitter, it's like someone going, I just got an achievement or Bruce saying something that was probably not going to happen because everything Bruce has said has not come to fruition as of year one. So like we got this situation where we want to hear from them. We want them to tell us what their vision looks like, what their plan looks like for a year two, how they're addressing all of our concerns. Will we ever get an SMART? And it's never anything but crickets. Just complete and utter silence. And a lot of times we all feel pretty bad about it because it's just like, hmm, great. Here we are and nothing's happening. I've tracked this. It's go There's been times where they don't say anything for 14 weeks. How it is a game that is a live service ASIM horror game with an active community base just go, eh, we'll, we'll talk to you later. It's just absolutely asinine and it's like nothing I've ever seen. You watch games like Dead by Daylight, Texas Chainsaw that are in the same genre and they are talking and tweeting all the time because you need to keep people excited and that is something that saber just doesn't give a damn about and it's really rough but there it is 
the good, the bad, and the you got real ugly of year one. Tell me what you think. What's your good? What's your bad? What's your real ugly? I want to hear and talk about it all in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and later, mates.